Okay, great. Uh, so Michael Lippman, Principal Product Manager at Fortinet. Um, I will say just a quick response to you is we're, you know, we, we are engineering focused and, and we do create our own uh, components and pieces where we need to, but obviously also, as Andy was saying, we adhere to those standards and we develop against, you know, we develop against those standards. Um, real quick, what I'll show you today is to, to try to bring together that discussion we've had this morning about uh, the journey to SASE, and that, is in, that includes our SD-WAN solution. This is uh, a high level diagram. It's a little bit of an eye chart to look at. I don't expect you to you know, understand all the pieces there, but essentially this is uh, a representative SD-WAN network that we have built out. There are components in here that we can use to adjust uh, the underlay connections and introduce latency and things like that. That's really not the point of today and to get into those weeds into the GUI. The point of today is to show you where our innovation is going, what we've done with our centralized management solution, and how that has been applied to SD-WAN and providing that visibility and kind of uh, rolling into um, what we're doing with that integration into Ford Assassin. Right, so this is kind of a tricky conversation because you're seeing somewhat the first part of a SASE framework, which would be the SD-WAN components. Um, and what we're doing there and that in innovation is that autonomous uh, kind of nature, that highly secure nature. We haven't really mentioned FortiGuard Labs, which underpins all of our products as well from a security standpoint. That's available and, and used in this uh, centralized management appliance. Um, We'll talk about security and how that is integrated into the fabric and how that impacts universal trust, uh, profile and policy synchronization, all of those things that you would expect. And then also, again, that uh, the SD-WAN components and the integration into SD-WAN and that two-pronged approach that we have. Uh, the universal ZTNA um, access, which is more granular, and the secure private access SD-WAN which you'll see more of uh, in the, actually in the next demo. This is that centralized management appliance that I was talking about. And this is that similar look and feel across 40 OS that we were, that we were saying. So this is the Forti Manager uh, VM. Uh, Forti Gate VM would have that same uh, look and feel from a menu standpoint in terms of uh, visibility, dashboard, system information, uh, what devices are connected, what's going on system resource wise, uh, things like that. So there's places to click around and, and do all of those things. Um, digging into those components, as we look at what we can see here, obviously there's a device component here. We have the FortiGates here. We have the different branches and the different hubs. If I go into one of those hubs, I get additional information. I can look at um, the network components, I can see lots of different components here that make up that centralized management. One of those newer pieces here is this uh, orchestration that we've implemented. And, and what's very interesting here, uh, quick little background, once upon a time, I was a systems engineer here at Fortinet in the field, selling SD-WAN around you know, 2017 time frame or so. So looking at where we were then, where we had very solid technology and, and the framework, We've now adapted that and things that we, the automations that we didn't have are now here. So this work here is really important as a result of that work. What this does is essentially allow you to build uh, the environment for what you want your hubs to look like, what you want your branches to look like, how you want the SD-WAN to behave, how to configure the IPsec tunnels, how to configure your, your BGP, right? Anything around uh, a device that would uh, require some kind of configuration, you would do that here. And it's kind of a one-time set it and forget it kind of a, kind of a thing. And, and what that leads you into, the next uh, bigger component here is the monitors that we provide. This is that asset identity center here. Again, this is high visibility into, into what you're seeing, but also actionable by being able to you know, click in these, in these graphs and get information. We also provide um, information about the VPN and those tunnels and that connectivity, right? So 
um, we can actually dig in and see the traffic, see what's going on with those, with those connections. It's visual, so if something were to go down, uh, we would get some notifications there. That, again, speaks to that visibility that we have. Um, could you go into at least a configuration for something like BGP? Because sure. I haven't used Florida OS in a while, but I remember there are a lot of things that you could not do through the Florida Manager GUI mm -hmm. with, B, with regards to BGP and a lot of the protocols. You had to jump into the CLI to do it, uh, which I was actually more comfortable doing anyway. Sure. But um, I'd like to see if that has changed. Sure, I'm going to defer to Andy real quick. If you want to narrate, uh, go ahead. Yeah, I was I was going to comment on that because that that might have been prior to the seven dot zero two timeframe. We introduced something called VGP templates, and w essentially the design that Michael is showing you here is that we have this overlay orchestrator. Overlay orchestrator is designed to create the overlay network for ninety nine percent of the use cases. But one thing that we really like about our solution is that every single configuration parameter is customizable. So while you don't need to be a BGP expert, in your case, if you need to go in there and tweak any BGP setting, you can go into the respective BGP template and modify it to your liking, and it'll take uh, effect across the entire region. So, Michael, if you go right there where you are at BGP, you see the list of essentially BGP templates that the orchestrator has configured based off of what you wanted to, uh, what, based off of your intention, because it's an intent-based wizard. And in doing so, you have a branch BGP. So if you double click on the Corp A branch BGP, this will be the BGP settings that will take into effect for your entire region. And so there you see the neighbors, you uh, don't have neighbor groups in this case because it's a it's a one-to-one, -one, it's basically a mapping to every single overlay. But this template should contain every single BGP parameter that you would need to on the 40 gate perspective. Uh, there's only been once or twice where I have seen where something is missing and it, it might have been an oversight at some point. But for the most part, if it's not there, we, 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 we put it in there because it's, the intention is that you do everything directly from the template. Improvement? Did that answer your <laughs> well, uh, Yeah, I, I guess. Uh, I mean, I have to, I'd have to get a hands on to with it to, to really make a judgment. But um, I think I, in my case, I think it was in particular something like uh, MD5 authentication or something like that, that that wasn't supported through the GUI. Yeah, it, it could be as well. Before we had a section, you would configure that through the individual device, uh, perhaps, and there were things missing there. BGP templates should have everything you need from a configuration perspective. Uh, I, and, and if it doesn't, we, we also have CLI templates that you could always reference. They, they, they're quite extensible, but the BGB templates should have everything you need. Okay. We, we could spend days just talking about BGP, <laughs> I think, um, and, and those use cases. Uh, moving along, um, I'm actually going to go down to this FortiView section, and we're going to look first at this SD-WAN summary, again, to just show you that visibility. Once... Uh, where we were just looking in the device manager section, uh, and you can see you have you know the ability to control uh, the timings of this. But this is the overall SD WAN health summary, uh, SD WAN SLA issues, anything that's happening uh, in the overall environment from a from a summary standpoint. And then the other piece, which is really exciting, I think more than more than than that other section, is how we can uh, provide even more visibility into the individual. Uh, underlays, right? So there's there's way too much here to really do any of this, you know, justice in terms of uh, all the different things that you're going to get from this environment. But you can actually see, uh, you know, statistics as an uptime, what's going on with the performance, what are the rules doing? And I think this really speaks to our strength and one of the core components of 40 OS is our really robust ability to discover applications Right, we've been doing that for a very long time, and now it's being leveraged in our SD WAN solution to make sure that the traffic is routed per the design that you have set up from a networking standpoint, but then also specifically at the uh, application level. Okay, so that's this is about you know the first component there we showed you was how to build that SD WAN network and how we've improved that automation process. Uh, and with some additional visibility, and then going a little bit deeper into uh, inspecting that 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 network, 
and understanding the health of that network. And SASE frameworks adapt. So SD-WAN networks adapt and they change. Uh, users uh, fluctuate, traffic fluctuates. The, the, any questions here? We're a little bit pinched for time, so I'm gonna move on. Um, the last component, which, we, which we, I really wanted to cover was um, from a security standpoint, you know, we provide in, in the, the centralized management piece and part of that automation, uh, you can pick you know, what types of web filter profiles, what types of application control profiles that you want to run on what devices. So again, the security here is, is a big component and that automation piece is a big component um, as well. Take a closer look at the security profiles. I think there were a couple of questions around what does 40 OS really mean? How does it drive consistently across? If you pay attention to what you see at the tabs on the top, the antivirus URL filtering DNS filter um, right at the top here, you will see this very quickly as we kind of get to the SASE demo. All of the security capabilities will be seen in the SASE UI as well. Because it again, it goes back to the concept of the same operating system. Like if you look at all of these security capabilities have been built over the last 20 years. Like if you look at the web filtering, you support over 90 plus categories. You have a lot of different action items which you can take, block, allow access, uh, authenticate, warning. So a lot of customization what you can do, create a custom allow list, custom block list, defined by regular expressions. We're not going into the details, but this really provides a comprehensive security stack which has been built over the last couple of decades. In the same tabs, what you're showcasing here, uh, IPS, application filtering, web filtering, you will quickly see that translate into the SASE UI for securing the remote users as well.